Hi, I'm Tanya Martini, and I work with my colleague Andrew Dane to deliver the first year psychology course here at Brock. If you're watching this video, then it's probably because you or someone in your family is considering studying psychology at Brock next year. I know that choosing a university can be difficult, especially when you're trying to navigate the stress that comes with a busy grade 12 year. As a parent with a son in the same position, I relate to those concerns that you're likely feeling about making the choice. And so I'm going to do my best in the next 15 to 20 minutes to give you a real feel for the psychology department at Brock and what you can expect if you choose to come and study here. Before I talk about that though, I want to start by taking a moment to address a really basic question and that is, of all the things you could study next year, why choose psychology? Now usually when I tackle this question with high school students and their parents, I focus on the fact that one of the real advantages of a degree in psychology is that it keeps a lot of doors open for students. I've noticed that when I talk to people at recruitment events that one of the primary reasons that students want to come to university is to increase their chances of securing a job that they'll find interesting and rewarding. But the second thing that I notice is that many of them aren't 100% sure about exactly what that job's going to be. So when I talk to people, I try to provide some examples of all the different career directions that Brock psychology students have pursued. For example, we have a number of students who go on to pursue a variety of careers in business, sometimes after completing an MBA or a more specialized certification in areas like human resources. Other students are interested in forensics and the law, and they head off to law school or other specialized legal programs or they go to work in the prison system or with the police force. A large number of our students are interested in education and they've used their psychology degree as a springboard to careers in teaching, library science, or working as clinicians within the school system. Similarly, students who are interested in healthcare often find that a psychology degree positions them well to move into clinical or counseling work, social work, or other fields like occupational therapy. Now you may be surprised to learn that a psychology degree is also a really good starting point for people who are interested in data analytics, an area that's increasingly in demand in today's job market where there's such an emphasis on understanding big data. Here you can see some of our graduates who've gone on to other specialized programs and are now working in a variety of settings from polling to insurance to universities. And finally, we have students who just follow their own path and they do lots of other things like fundraising, event planning, corporate leadership training, and employment counseling. Okay, so if we can agree that a psychology degree is a good bet because it will open doors to a number of different career paths, then why should you choose to come to Brock for psychology? I think that there are at least three things that make us unique and really distinguish us from other schools that you might be considering. The first is that we have a very supportive program with a lot of flexibility built into it. The second is that we have a real commitment to building skills that are valued in the workplace. And finally, the third reason that I think Brock is an amazing place to get your psychology degree is that we've gone all in on our commitment to helping students position themselves effectively for a career after graduation. For the next few minutes then, I want to just unpack those three reasons a bit so that you have a better sense of what I'm talking about and why I think Brock is a great place to do a psychology degree. My first point related to the fact that we offer a welcoming and supportive program with a great deal of flexibility. I think that the supportive part is really important because if there's one concern that comes up a lot, it's that high school students, and to some extent their parents as well, are really nervous about just getting lost in a large university class where nobody knows who they are and with no one who will be there to help them with their questions and concerns. Let me start by saying that the first year psychology course provides a substantial amount of academic support to our students. In a typical year, the instructors and the teaching assistants would run about 100 office hours every semester. That's close to 10 hours each week over and above class time. And we do that to make sure that there are lots of opportunities to get students' questions answered. More importantly though, a large number of our classes in psychology, even those with big enrollments like the one in first year, have a small group component that allows students to interact with one another and connect with their peers in groups of about 20 or so. 
Our department understands that this type of personal connection is particularly important in our large first year class when students are still trying to learn the ropes and make new friends. For that reason, we've committed considerable resources to running the first year course in a way that puts students in lecture for two hours each week, but then has them in a small group seminar for the third hour. Those seminars are run by specially trained teaching assistants, or TAs, who are some of our best and brightest senior students in third and fourth year. Believe me when I tell you that they remember exactly what it was like to feel a bit overwhelmed in their first year, and they're very committed to helping our new students make a smooth transition to university. Perhaps even more important, having our TAs running those small group seminars in first year means that there will always be someone who knows you by name and will be there to answer your questions. They'll probably notice if you seem to be struggling and they have extensive knowledge of the resources that are available on campus. So they can point you in the right direction if you need support with academics or mental health concerns. Aside from the seminars in many of our psychology courses though, we're fortunate in our department to have three full-time staff members whose main focus is supporting our students as they move through the degree program. For example, Tammy Stewart works full-time in the department as the course manager for the first year introductory psychology course, as well as for our required second year course in career preparation. One of the nice things about that is that our psych students come to know Tammy as they begin their journey in first year, and then she continues to be a familiar face when they move into second year. Tammy's role is an important one because she helps our first and second year students with any special learning needs or accommodations, as well as managing extensions for those who run into unexpected trouble like illness or other extenuating circumstances. Like our TAs, Tammy's an expert on all the resources that are available at Brock, so she's able to help students find their way to the appropriate people on campus whenever specialized help is needed. In addition to Tammy, we also have two academic advisors in psychology, Carol and Kirsty, and their job is to help students navigate their degree as a whole. They're there to support you for the full length of your degree program. That's important because we offer a number of options for students and we want to make sure that you make choices that will be a good fit for you. When I say we offer a number of options, I, I mean that in two ways. First of all, there's a lot of flexibility related to the courses that we offer so that we can accommodate our students' very diverse interests. For example, if you look at our course offerings, you'll see that we have courses related to neuroscience and the way that people perceive and think about the world as well as courses about business, organizations, and so social processes more generally. You can take courses related to human development and learning, psychopathy and criminal behavior, research, data management and data analytics, and of course, health, mental health, and well-being. But the flexibility doesn't stop with the courses. At Brock, we also offer four different degree paths, one three-year program and three different four-year programs all of which are designed to help students get where they want to go. In addition, each of our four-year degrees also has a co-op option available for people who want to secure some on-the-job experience while completing their bachelor's degree. Now, usually at this point, people start to have a bit of a deer in headlights look about them. So many options, how will I know which degree program to select? But the good news is that you don't need to choose a degree program right now. In fact, you really don't need to make a decision until the end of your second year. All of our programs are exactly the same for the first two years. So our two academic advisors are here to help psychology majors with course and degree planning, career coaching, and they're there to just generally support our students in making good decisions about degree options that will get them where they wanna go and the courses that they need for their program. They can help students to navigate university regulations required for graduation. And if a student decides that they want to change their degree program partway through their time at Brock, they can help to ensure that the move happens with as little disruption as possible. Okay, so we've talked about the fact that the program is designed to be flexible and provide students with a lot of support, especially in first year. The second of the three reasons that I think you should study at Brock relates to our commitment to ensuring that you get the skills that you need to be successful, regardless of what your future goals are. 
Now, some students are a bit surprised at how strongly I emphasize this issue of skills, but I think it's really important to understand that while you're completing your degree, it's not enough anymore just to learn about psychology. Getting a job that you're really invested in means that you also need to have the kinds of skills that are important in the workplace, like teamwork, leadership, critical thinking, and communication. In our department, we offer a lot of opportunities to work on building skills that will be attractive both to employers at, to, at the end of your degree, as well as to admissions committees who review applications for master's programs, for example, if you decided that you wanted to go on in school after finishing your bachelor's degree. One of the key ways that we build skills is through our co-op program and other real-world experience-based learning opportunities. Students in the co-op stream are able to secure work placements through the co-op office, but they're also able to search out their own placements if they have an idea about where they'd like to work. And even if you aren't in the co-op stream, there are other courses in our program that offer experiential learning opportunities. For example, students in our fourth year course in Atypical Children's Development complete volunteer, work, complete volunteer hours in Brock's Special Needs Activity Program, or SNAP, which serves kids with developmental disabilities in the Niagara region. Our second year career preparation course, which I'll talk more about in a moment, also has a required experiential education component that's designed to give students hands-on experience in an area that they think they'd like to pursue as a career. And I noted earlier that our first year seminars are led by teaching assistants who are in third and fourth year. This is a really amazing experiential education opportunity that most universities simply can't offer. Students who work as teaching assistants take on a considerable amount of responsibility and learn a great deal about leadership and mentorship, including how to facilitate good discussions in groups of very diverse people, how to resolve conflict, and how to provide good feedback. Aside from emphasizing hands-on learning, a second way that the department has committed to helping with skill development relates to those small group learning opportunities that I spoke about earlier. I noted that we have small seminars in first year, but there are a number of other courses in our department that also include either a seminar or a lab-based component. From an instructor's point of view, small group seminars and labs are a great opportunity to build skills because they allow for students to have a much more active role in their learning. They have the chance to work on their ability to articulate themselves, they get to work with others on projects that help with teamwork skills, and they get to engage with real world problems and test out their critical thinking. For those of you who are more interested in the natural sciences, we also have some world-class labs where you'll get hands-on experience using state-of-the-art equipment. Finally, regardless of your interests, there are a lot of opportunities for students to get involved in the research that's going on in the department. A number of my colleagues have very active programs of research looking at everything from the effects of hormones on human behavior to the intricacies of human vision, from face perception to prejudice and discrimination, and from bullying to psychopathy and children's ability to testify accurately in a courtroom. All of them take on undergraduate research assistants to help out with their studies. And even if you have no interest in becoming a researcher yourself, many of the skills you can foster by working as part of a research team can very easily be applied to other kinds of career paths. Okay, so I've talked a bit about our supportive and flexible program. I've talked about the opportunities that we offer to help students develop important career-related skills. And so now I'd like to just wrap up by talking about an element of our program that I think really distinguishes us from every other psychology department in the province, if not the country. So the final point that I wanna make then has to do with our department's commitment to making sure that when you're finished your degree, you'll know how to go out and sell it. Now, this is the point where I think high school students probably think I'm a bit bonkers. After all, they haven't even started their degree. And here's me talking about being well positioned to use it after they graduate. I want you to bear with me through this last point though, because I think it's really important. Our department started thinking carefully about uh, career preparation about 10 years ago. And although I won't take any credit for the initial idea, what I will tell you is that when it was first floated that we might consider offering a course in this area, I was all over it because I had just seen too many students in my office 
telling me that they were nervous about graduation because they had no idea how to talk to people about this degree that they just spent four years and tens of thousands of dollars on. They had no clear idea how they were going to leverage all that work and money. And that's just not okay. I think it's a sign of just how seriously we take students' future goals that our department offers not one, but two courses in career preparation. The first one comes in second year, and it's mandatory for all psychology majors. This course includes an experiential learning component that has every student take on a 40-hour volunteer placement with a community-based organization that aligns with the direction they'd like to go in after graduation. So we've had students work on crisis hotlines, they've worked as tutors in after school programs, they've worked with police forces, speech therapists, human resources departments, and agencies like Family and Children's Services. And the course is intended to be very practical. Students are videotaping practice interviews and working on resumes, cover letters, and LinkedIn profiles. And small group seminar discussions are focused on professional communication, for example, like writing clear emails. We also get students to start thinking hard about their skill set in that course, including the kinds of skills that will be valuable in their career of choice and where they can start to get those experiences while they're completing their degree. And during this time, they're getting continuous feedback from both teaching assistants and their peers so that they have some sense of how they're coming across and how they can improve. But our commitment to career preparation doesn't stop in the second year. We also have a fourth year course called the Transition to Work that, that students take in their last semester. This course provides a space in the degree where we encourage students to just stop and think about what they have been doing for the past four years. What course experiences have they had? What volunteer work have they done? What jobs have they done for pay? And how can they pull all of those learning experiences together in ways that really highlight the skills that they've developed, either for interviews with potential employers or postgraduate admissions committees? In this course, students research potential careers and they carry out informational interviews with people who are working in their field of interest. They go back and they rework their LinkedIn profiles, their resumes and cover letters, and they have another opportunity to practice their interview techniques and get feedback. They also learn basic website design skills while creating an electronic portfolio that draws their experiences together and showcases their knowledge and their skills. For me, the resources, both in terms of money and time, that our department has put into career preparation for our psychology majors should provide you with a good indicator of just how important your success is for us. We're totally committed not just to giving you skills and knowledge about psychology, but also to making sure that you can take what you've learned and really leverage it to get where you want to go. Of course, there are lots of other positive things I could tell you about our department, but I'm sure you don't want to watch a video that's that long. The reality is you don't need to take my word for it when I tell you that Brock is a great place to do an undergraduate degree in psychology. We have about two dozen faculty members in the department who are doing world-class research with millions of dollars in funding from outside agencies. But these people are also great teachers who are committed to making sure that they're also giving you a world-class education. It's not surprising then for the, that for the past several years when McLean's Magazine has ranked student satisfaction, Brock consistently comes in the top five. And for 2021, we ranked second. All this, and we're just about 90 minutes away from the GTA. I hope that this short video has provided you with some information that will be helpful as you make your decision about where to pursue your degree next fall. And I want to emphasize that we're here if you have any questions that you'd like to get answered. To be clear, there are some things we can't address in the department. Residences, accommodations for disabilities, questions about co-op, all of those should be directed to the appropriate departments at Brock. But if you have questions about psychology, either the first year course or the degree more generally, please don't hesitate to get in touch and we'll do our best to get you the answers that you need. I'll finish by just wishing you the very best of luck for the coming year and saying that I hope that we have the opportunity to welcome you to our department at Brock in the fall.